In the last video, we did a deep dive on statistical properties of OLS estimator. In this video, we are going to talk about how good is the overall model. So let's say we have these five sample data points and there is a population regression line and a fitted regression line estimated by OLS. How do we measure the performance of the fit or the goodness of the fit? By performance, we want to measure how much variation within Y can be explained by X. One way to measure the quality of the fit is to look at the standard error of regression. Sometimes SER is also called as RSE, which stands for residual standard error, which after all is the estimated standard deviation of the error terms. Now for a better fit, we would expect the residuals to be smaller and so the RSE would also be smaller. RSE is the measure of average deviation of Y from the regression line. Note that even if the estimates are very good and close to the true population parameters, we still have to live with RSE and we can never perfectly predict Y given X. While RSE represents lack of fit, it has a drawback. RSE is not unit free. For example, consider our advertising data set. We can get the OLS estimates for the parameters. Then we can get the residual U hat. We can also calculate the residual sum of squares. And finally, we can calculate the RSE. Note that RSE is in the same units as sales. If sales is in thousands, then average prediction error would be 2820 units. This number is vague and it doesn't really tell us if it's small or big. That's the problem with reporting RSE as the performance measure. We face the same issue while reporting covariance instead of correlation as the strength of association between two variables. So we need something that is standardized, which brings us to another measure of quality of fit. Let's say we don't include X. Our model without X would simply be Y equals to beta zero plus epsilon. It's called the null model meaning no explanatory variables are included in the model. In this case, our fitted y or y hat will be a flat line, which includes only the intercept. And it will be flat because essentially it means irrespective of x, my prediction of y is constant. It's not difficult to see that OLS will give us the value of the fitted intercept equal to the sample mean of y. Now, after this model is fit, how much variation of y is still left to explain? This is the baseline variation. Any model should do better than this and the SSR should be lower than this. This baseline variation is called sum of total squared or SST, which is the sum of square deviations of y from its mean. Now if we include x in our model in the form of simple linear regression, then we get a new SSR, which is the part of y that is not explained by the model. The part that is explained is SST minus SSR, sometimes called as explained sum of squares or ESS. This is the amount of variation in Y we are able to explain through X as per our model. If we look at the expression for explained sum of squares, it's the same as the total sum of squares, only that the actual Y has been replaced by fitted y. And this makes sense. 
total sum of squares involves square deviations of actual y from its mean. The fitted y is what the model suggests y should be given x. So remember that the actual mean and the fitted mean are the same because OLS line passes through x bar and y bar as discussed before. Now the ratio of the variation explained by the model and the baseline variation is called the coefficient of determination or R square. R square is the measure of goodness of fit and it lies between 0 to 1. Higher the R square, better is the fit. And it's logical if you think. If the fit is great, then y hat or the predicted y will be very close to the actual y. And so ESS will be close to SST. So R square will be close to 1. And if there is no association between X and Y, the fitted line will be flat, meaning the slope would be 0 and R square would be very low. Does it mean that stronger the association between x and y, higher is r square? Answer is yes. But we have to be careful with the terms association or dependence. Since we are studying linear regression, we are only talking about linear dependence. If x and y are linearly dependent, then r square will be high. But what's a measure of linear dependence? Correlation. Does that mean R square is linked to correlation? Yes, it is. Not only that, R square in fact is the square of correlation between X and Y. And we can prove that. First notice that the OLS estimate of beta 1 hat can be written in a simplified form that is correlation between X and Y scaled by the ratio of their standard deviations. R square can also be simplified as this. Notice that the variances that we are taking is within the sample variance with a given sample. We are not talking about random sample here. And we get the beautiful result that R square is the square of correlation in simple linear regression. Also, correlation is always between minus 1 to 1, so R square will be between 0 to 1. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe to this channel to get latest educational content on statistics, finance, risk management, and analytics. Also, if you are a finance professional and looking for a certification in data science, log on to peakstotails.com and check out our prep course for Finance Data Professional, which is a global certification offered by FDP Institute. Experience a new way of learning complex mathematical and statistical concepts with rich visualization in an easy-to-follow Microsoft Excel-based environment. Take advantage of our mind maps and Excel-based hands-on modeling sessions.